art is subjective and the subjectivity of art is such an amazing and wonderful thing that it almost feels like the eighth wonder of the world. Another fun thing about the subjectivity is that it constantly keeps on growing along with the person. The style of art form a person finds funny now, he see may not find it funny in the future. And the style of art form a person finds cringy now, he see may start to find it as the most epic and the cool thing in the future. And something similar has happened with me. And this is the story of it. The masterpiece I couldn't understand. A silent voice. This all starts during the year of 2016-2017 when two anime movies were so much in hype. They were Your Name and A Silent Voice. And these two movies had divided the anime community in two parts. One claiming Your Name is a better movie and the other one claiming No, A Silent Voice is a superior and a better movie. The conflict between these two parties was so strong that it made me go like what exactly in these two movies that the community is going nuts over them. So I watched both of them starting with Your Name then A Silent Voice and I found both of them to be a uh, crap. Not because the content in them wasn't good, but because when I saw your name, I found that it's a romantic movie and it falls under romance genre. And I expected a silent voice to be similar to your name, with same sort of college romance drama in it. Because the community was comparing them so hard that I thought they must be very very similar to one another, hence being the reason behind their comparison. Coming to the next point, the reason I found them to be crap was because you see, during 2016 when I watched these two movies, I was in a very different phase of life which I call teen machoism or you can understand it as phase where you had Tyler Durden's mentality. And during that phase of mine, I used to look down on emotions like love and romance as I had pretty nihilist mindset and perception towards things. So I had watched those movies with the mindset of I'm too superior for the consumption of these kind of movies that fall under love and romance genre and due to that prejudice perception towards romance and Tyler Durden's sigma mindset of mine. Though I found your name to be really appealing but I didn't allow myself to appreciate a movie that came under romance genre as appreciating it would have gone against my sigma or Tyler Durden mindset that I was under at that time. However let's keep your name aside and focus only on a silent voice as your name could be the topic for the next episode of this series. So after watching your name, few days later I went in to watch A Silent Voice thinking it would be similar to your name. And as I was watching A Silent Voice, I was time and again asking myself what kind of romantic movie is this as it didn't even have hour of romance for the most of the part. Then I thought maybe all this is just set up for the romance to happen during like at the end of the movie which quite didn't really happen as I expected. So when I completed the movie, I went like that wasn't even half as good as your name in terms of romance. So yeah, turns out the answer of the debate is that your name is a better movie. While in truth, due to the phase I was in, I didn't see the movie as the way it wanted itself to be. Instead, I saw it as what I wanted it to be, which was the prejudiced imagery of the movie I had developed for it after watching your name thinking this movie would be similar to it. And that's how it went. I watched the movie and found it to be a disappointment in the name of romance. Many years passed after that incident and as life went on, its ups and downs changed me as a person, leading me to come out of that nihilist sigma phase where I looked down on human emotions. So as I was telling, many years had passed since I watched that movie. However, A Silent Voice is a pretty popular and loved movie in the community, so it used to keep on resurfacing on the anime community because of what I used to constantly stumble upon the clips or scenes from the movie being shared in the anime groups or stuff. Though for the very long time, I skipped anything related or regarding A Silent Voice whenever it used to pop up on my screen because the past me was entitled to his opinion on A Silent Voice being a lousy movie as it didn't make me feel any feelings. But one day, a post appeared on my feed with captions something as like, the best scene ever in all of anime. And it was the ending scene of the movie A Silent Voice, where all those X marks fall down from the people's face. Just seeing that caption, I went in my head, what best scene of all time. I remember this was such a blend and a dull scene in the movie, as it didn't make any sense. Not only that, this scene was such a bad way to end a romantic movie, as there was no romance or romantic moment between the characters. However, this time, as I was watching the scene, it felt different. I understood the symbolism behind those X marks falling off of people's faces. Then I went on to watch some other scenes from the movie on YouTube and the movie just felt so different. It felt like as if I was watching a completely different movie. As now I finally understood what those scenes meant and they were not filler scenes, they were just in there for aesthetics. 
they too had some meanings to them. And something I understood about the movie after finally understanding those scenes is that A Silent Voice is not just some regular romance movie. After that incident, I constantly kept on feeling like this movie has many underlying layer, themes and aspects to it. But never in my life I have rewatched or watched a movie twice by my own willingness. Because I had this rule since my cinephile days that I won't rewatch stuff, instead I would watch something completely new rather than watching the same thing twice. Because back then I was in this race of consuming as much content as possible in a very short period of time so that I could be called a certified cinephile. And due to that mentality of mine, I speed ran so many movies at once because of what I couldn't really understand what those movies tried to convey or portray. And due to that immature mentality and habit of mine, there are many masterpieces that I couldn't understand back then that now I have to rewatch to truly understand and appreciate them as now that I've grown up and matured as a person. I may be going a little off topic here but you see, I'm a huge Batman fan. He is someone I aspire to be like. His morality, self-discipline and his way of living life by rules and moral codes is something I've always found very fascinating. So in order to become like Batman, I tend to live my life as well by some rules and moral codes. Doesn't matter how silly or dumb those rules may sound or seem, I tend to live by them and not watching any movies or series twice, instead watching something completely new in place of re-watching the same thing is one of my such silly rules that I devotionally follow and live by. Yet still, I don't know why this movie A Silent Voice had my mind and heart standing on the opposite side of the spectrum. While my mind was telling me I must live by my rules and moral codes, but my heart was dying to re-watch it because back when I saw those clips from the movie, I finally understood what those scenes meant. Since then, I've been feeling like the movie has been calling for me. It almost feels like the movie is seeking my attention, as if the movie is trying to say something to me, like it has something it wants me to know, experience and witness. And after a very long constant battle between my mind and heart, I finally rewatched the very first movie of my life on my own willingness, named A Silent Voice. And when I completed the movie, I was blown away. I was just so blown away that it made me angry on how could I be so ignorant, stubborn and entitled to my opinion on this movie being the same old type of cringe college romance drama that I just refused to even try to understand what this movie was trying to convey. Instead, I had closed my eyes to everything the movie had presented me with due to my entitlement of it can't be that good. Not only that, I was also constantly misjudging and molding the movie according to my prejudice imagery of it that I had made up in my mind. Rewatching the movie made me realize that the movie I had looked down upon, thinking it's some sort of cringe teen romance drama, turns out isn't a romantic movie at all. Instead, it is a story of a boy completely devoured by the guilt of his past actions, trying to forgive and love himself. It's a story about living with regrets and out of all, most importantly, it is a story about bullying and how it leaves a lifelong scar on you. Yet still the most shocking revelation about the movie for me while rewatching it was realizing that the movie is about bullying because it's something I didn't see when I saw the movie for the first time because the part of the world I come from here society expects girls to be a shy, introvert culture and a quiet type of person as talkative, aggressive and easily submissive aren't seen as a good characteristics for a girl to have and as cinema is called the mirror of the society so when they make a romantic movie here, it is mostly the boy who falls in love with the girl. But the love doesn't work when it's only one way, so the boy needs to make the girl fall in love as well. But as already said, girls aren't easily submissive, so to make her fall in love with him, the boy e pieces her. Does Cringy wanna be romantic gesture in front of her out in public, embarrasses her, humiliates her, bullies her and somewhat harasses her to the point that she falls for him. It is in a way like Stockholm Syndrome. But generalized, and this is what you call romance here in this part of the world. As it's something that's been going on from like the beginning of cinema in here and is being fed to us since very young age which led to such stuff to be normal. Due to what I didn't see or find anything wrong in all those scenes where Shoyo bullied Nishimiya in the past thinking this is something later up they would make up look romantic because that's how romance works here in movies. But the fact that I find it all wrong now shows that I sure have grown up as a person which is a good thing and makes me pretty happy. And on the topic why I couldn't understand the movie on my first watch and I won't shy away from admitting the truth that 
I guess I wasn't old enough to understand the movie. Not physically, but mentally. But I just wish I could erase all my memories of this movie and experience it like the first time with the current mindset and mentality of mine. Because the story of this movie is so wonderful. However, I'm not going to talk about the story or explain the in-depth meaning of this movie. Because even if I give my thousand percent, I won't be able to do justice to it. Because the feelings that this movie has made me feel, no matter how hard I try, I can't put them in words. You see, I'm a very indifferent guy. I have never in my life cried while watching a movie. And for the record, I have seen the movie Creep of the Fireflies as well. Though a silent voice didn't make me cry either. However, it still managed to make me feel such kind of feelings that I have never felt from any medium of art nor I had even thought that it was possible for an art to make me feel all these types of emotion. Because the feeling of living with guilt, regrets and the sense of self-questioning on do I even deserve to be this happy after everything I've done in my past and self-hate. These are the emotions that I'm very very familiar with because of the incidents from the past where I was so blinded by the superficial idea of friendship that I couldn't see the fine line between right and wrong and ended up doing things that I regret till this date. And somehow this movie portrayed all those emotions that I always felt inside of me but could never really figure it out what exactly is that I feel in such a beautiful way that the movie comforted me. It almost felt like the movie understood me and spoke to me saying I understand how you feel and it's okay to let go of what's already gone. You don't have to be so harsh on yourself. The movie, especially its ending, made me come in terms with those emotions of mine, solving the inner conflict I've had in me for so long while also showing me the way to what I should be doing with my life from here on out. In other words, this movie, A Silent Voice, at last brought me peace.